Hi, this lecture is about hand polyductly. The objectives of this lecture is we would like to explain the classification and different types of hand polyductly, and then we're going to review in which patients and uh, in which types of hand polyductly the pediatrician needs to do genetic work up, and then we're going to go uh, through the outline of treatment uh, options for different types of hand polyductly. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself and Dr. Nack. Before we start uh, the classification, I'd like first to explain what is meant by pre axial and post axial and why is this uh, name is given. It is related to the uh, upper extremity development during uh, the fetal life. Uh, so when the upper extremity buds start to develop, uh, this is the position of the arm of the fetus in which uh, the radius and the thumb are actually more cranial and the ulna, uh, the ulna and the uh, small digits are more caudal. So this is why uh, if a deformity occurs in this area, it's called preaxial, and a deformity occurs in this area, it will called postaxial. So preaxial and postaxial is related to uh, the position of the upper extremity uh, during the fetal life. So what is the classification of uh, polydactyly? Uh, we have post-axial polydactyly, pre-axial polydactyly, and central polydactyly. As we said in the previous uh, slide, uh, pre-axial means related to the thumb and the radius. Post-axial means related to the ulna and the small finger. And of course, central is related to the uh, central three fingers. So uh, by far the most common is the post-axial polydactyly. Uh, as you can see, here is an, an example of post-axial polydactyly, which is, uh, in most cases is a small knob, as we're going to discuss later. This is an example of pre-axial polydactyly. As we said, pre-axial pre polydactyly uh, is related to the thumb and the radius. And these are two different examples. You can see here uh, a small knob, and here you can see more developed thumb. So this is a polydactyly that is related to the uh, radial side and it's called pre-axial polydactyly. The third type, which is uh, by far uh, is the least common, is the central polydactyly, uh, which means that the, uh, the extra digit is related to the three central digits. You can see here, there is, this is the thumb, this is the small finger, and you have here two fingers that are attached together. It's called syndactyly. However, the finger, which is the ring finger, has an extra digit here, as you can see. As you can see here, this is uh, the ring finger, and it has like two fingers uh, uh, attached together, and these two fingers are also attached with the uh, uh, middle finger. So this is an example of central polydactyly, which is, uh, as we said, uh, by far uh, much less common. And in the remainder of this, uh, this uh, lecture, we're going to speak mainly about pre-axial and post-axial. We can see here a case of post-axial polydactyly. We said the post-axial polydactyly is the most common type. Post-axial, as we uh, described, is related to the ulna and the small finger. Uh, and most of the post-axial polyductly is a small knob, as you can see in this case. So post-axial polyductly, as we said, the post-axial polyductly are the extra digit that is related to the small finger and the ulnar bone. So sometimes it's called ulnar polyductly. Uh, as we had said, it's the most common type, and most cases uh, uh, the extra digit is not well deformed, uh, is not well formed digit, and it's connected to the hand with only a, a skin tag. Uh, it is much more common in African American children. Uh, so the instance in the African-American children is about 1 in 200 live birth. This is about 10 times more uh, than uh, in uh, white children, uh, which uh, is about 1 in 2,000 live birth. And in most cases, it's bilateral. So uh, the child will present with a post-axial polydactyly in, uh, in both uh, upper extremity in two-thirds of the cases. And most of these cases are usually uh, autosomal dominant cases, uh, and they are not associated with other syndromes. Uh, so the family may have a history uh, of the father or the mother with um, an extra digit that was removed, and there is no need uh, for genetic referral. Uh, this is different than if you have a, uh, a post-axial polydactyly uh, in children of other um, descent. Uh, it's much rare uh, to have this uh, condition uh, in children that are not uh, African-Americans. 
um, and usually it is unilateral uh, and uh, usually there is no family history uh, it can be associated with other syndromes uh, and uh, in this case it will need genetic referral so if you get a post uh, axial polydactyly which is um, a small finger uh, related to the small uh, uh, pinky finger and the ulna uh, in an African-American uh, family, uh, there is no need uh, in most cases for genetic referral. It's usually not associated with other syndrome. Uh, if you get it uh, in uh, other uh, um, uh, uh, children that are not African-American, uh, it's usually associated with uh, other syndrome and uh, it may require genetic what is uh, the treatment for uh, post-axial or ulnar polydactyly? Uh, so if the digit is uh, well formed, uh, w which means that there is bony connection to the hand, uh, this needs orthopedic uh, referral for removal. Uh, and remember that uh, these cases with well formed digits are uh, much rare. Uh, the vast majority of cases of post-axial polydactyly are actually the digits which have only soft tissue connection to the hand. And in these cases, uh, if you see the patient immediately after birth in the nursery or in the first month of life it can be done uh, easily with suture ligation as we're going to see in the example in the next slide however later in life uh, it's harder to get uh, the excision with just suture ligation so it may have to be done uh, in the surgery so you see here a patient uh, was just born um, and uh, he's one day old and you can see here he has a small knob here uh, so it's a post-axial polydactyly, it's related to the small finger, and here is the ulna, you can easily identify that with the small finger, so any case that is related to the small finger is post-axial polydactyly, as we have uh, described before, and uh, it can be done by suture ligation, so any type of suture, uh, you can use silk suture, and then you do uh, two or three uh, turns around the base, uh, and then you tie them, uh, you try to tie them uh, very securely so it does not dislodge uh, and it does not cause uh, 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 venous congestion. Uh, and usually by, you will tell the family to come to see you after seven days. By seven days, uh, this uh, small knob either had fallen down or it's uh, completely black and dark and you can just uh, uh, use the scissor to cut uh, and when you do that, just do it uh, uh, at the base of the uh, uh, finger. Uh, it's a relatively easy procedure uh, and it does not require anesthesia. Uh, all what you have to do is uh, two or three turns of the suture around the stock of the extra digit and then you tie it um, securely uh, uh, multiple ties to make sure it does not dislodge. Uh, it will turn gradually into black and then it will either fall down by itself or uh, uh, you uh, will have to cut uh, the dead uh, uh, digit. Preaxial polydactyly, as you can see in this uh, slide, uh, is the uh, polydactyly that is related to the thumb. Um, and uh, as we described before, uh, post axial, the one are related to the small finger and the ulna, uh, the pre axial, the one related to the thumb and the uh, radius. Uh, and these uh, are usually different than the um, uh, post axial. We, we said that most of the post axial are small skin tags or uh, knobs, uh, 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 ill def uh, formed um, uh, soft tissue only. Uh, however, the one in the pre-axial uh, are usually uh, more uh, developed. Pre-axial polydactyly uh, is less common than post-axial polydactyly. Pre-axial polydactyly is about one in one thousand live birth. Most cases are sporadic; they are not associated with certain um, inheritance pattern, and uh, most cases are unilateral. The cases can be associated with other congenital uh, conditions like Fanconi anemia or Holt or Arm syndrome. Um, uh, so if uh, the pediatrician uh, uh, think that there are other indications that this may be part of, the, uh, of um, uh, an overall syndrome uh, like Fanconi anemia or Holt or Arm syndrome, it may be necessary to send uh, these kids for genetic um, uh, referral. Uh, this does not have to be done in every case. However, if there is an indication that this condition is part of uh, a more broader syndrome, uh, it may be necessary to send for for uh, genetic referral. For the management of uh, pre-axial polydactyly, the pediatrician has to do a thorough history and physical exam. Uh, 
uh, to assess the condition if it's either isolated uh, polyductly or part of a general uh, uh, syndrome like uh, Fanconi anemia. Uh, and then uh, for the management of polyductly itself, it needs orthopedic referral for reconstruction. Usually the surgery is done between one and two years of age uh, because um, you don't want to do surgeries on very young kids uh, as this have a little bit higher uh, instance of anesthesia complication. And also it's technically uh, easier to wait till the uh, thumb is a little bit bigger and it's uh, a little bit easier to do the surgery. Uh, between uh, one and two years of age rather than doing it for small or very young infants. Uh, in in pre-axial polydactyly, uh, it's usually reconstruction. It's not a simple excision. Uh, and the uh, type of reconstruction basically depend on uh, the uh, type of polydactyly, uh, which depends on how developed is the uh, extra digit. Uh, in uh, most cases, as we're going to see in the example, uh, the more radial digit is excised and the ligament are reconstructed. Um, reconstruction is uh, important in the cases of uh, preaxial polydactyly uh, to make sure that the uh, remaining thumb uh, is uh, functional. So this is a case of uh, preaxial polydactyly. Uh, if you see the extra digit here, uh, which is more radial, or uh, in another word, more to the outside, is much less developed than this one. So um, as in, in most cases, the more the more radial digit will be excised. In this case, um, it's a very uh, rudimentary digit, and then all what is needed is a simple reconstruction of the ligament here. Sometimes, um, as we're going to see in another example, the extra digit is more developed, and in this case, uh, more advanced reconstructions are needed. So this is another example of reconstruction of uh, preaxial polydactyly. If you can see in this case, uh, um, the extra digit uh, is more formed than the previous example. Uh, so we have here uh, two thumbs that uh, look close to each other. Um, in this case, uh, uh, and uh, in most cases, uh, we uh, decided to remove the more uh, uh, radial one uh, and keep the more uh, ulnar one uh, because this allows uh, you to maintain uh, the ulnar uh, ligaments uh, which are more important than the radial ligaments. Um, however, you still have to reconstruct the uh, radial ligaments. So after excision of uh, this digit, um, uh, uh, reconstruction of the ligament should be done. Uh, also, um, the, the tendons uh, has to be realigned. Uh, sometimes osteotomy has to be done to maintain uh, the alignment of the uh, finger. As you, uh, so this is an intraoperative picture for this patient. So after reconstruction of the ligament, uh, a K wire, which is this uh, uh, wire here, was introduced to maintain the alignment of the digit. So in this example is different than the previous example. Uh, it shows more developed digit, and uh, the more developed digit uh, you have, uh, the more reconstruction uh, you have to do uh, for the remaining uh, digit that you maintain. Uh, as we said, in most cases, we'd like to maintain uh, the ulnar digit because that allows us to maintain the ulnar ligament, uh, which are more important for the thumb function than the radial ligament. Uh, the after excision of the digit, uh, uh, reconstruction of the ligament, tendons, and sometimes bone osteotomy has to be done. Uh, thank you very much. All my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision. Thank you.